Now, um, what are we going to do next will, to a large degree, depend on one thing you guys, what I saw, have all taken out of what has happened so far. If we talk about making this world a better place and we talk about innovation, all, by, all and everybody is constantly in full agreement. If you talk to scientists, you find out that there's a ton of wonderful things happening daily coming out of laboratories and universities. It's perfect. Unfortunately, most of this never makes it into implementation in society by means of business or anything else. So we don't have a lack of knowledge. We don't have a lack of invention. We don't have a lack of patents. We don't have a lack of protected competence and ideas that could be formed into business. What's not happening is that somebody picks it up, has the right incentives to do so, and turns it into a massively positive endeavor, company, not-for-profit, NGO, whatever. And all three of these players have to come together to bridge that gap. There's obviously an entrepreneur, there's somebody who has to give money, has to drive a team to do it. Why it doesn't happen often has to do that the public policy is not clear. So we don't know what is intended, and money is shy. It goes where there is lowest risk and where you have the biggest certainty of succeeding. And public policy is often getting short when there is no consensus in society. We have that these days around data protection, where we could heal many diseases much more efficiently and effectively if there was a consensus on what type of data, who wants to share, with whom, at what point. And it's simply not happening because there is no consensus. You will later meet an entrepreneur from Jordan who is tackling exactly that challenge and who just said, let's do a very transparent process, let's go for it, and let's see if we can do both. Build a substantive business and substantially improve the public health situation in his country, Jordan. So we will now look and meet three people who have done innovation business by themselves, with teams, in very different sub-industries, and all three of them have been very successful. All three of them have been very successful in bringing together these three systems, public policy, advocacy, and a successful business approach. And we would like you to meet these individuals and to understand what type of demographic solution they have built. So we will ask you and we will ask each other what is unique about these solutions? Why do they make sense, each and every one? There's a different reason for each and every entrepreneur you will meet and for each and every business. And this then will serve for you as a platform to later in the day and tomorrow develop your own ideas. So it's not that you copy any of that, you can do much better, but to see three different approaches to the very same problem that have been successful in the past. So what will happen now in module four will then lead to your own creation of actually one idea per person later. And then during a process tomorrow, we are elaborating together 
on these ideas and drill them down so in the evening that there is probably two ideas left per team with seven or eight people behind each of these ideas. In these groups, tomorrow evening, you will go the first time in front of the jury, and this is in a small room, so everybody will get to present their ideas, and everybody will then get feedback from the pre-jury, and you will then find out on Friday morning in the real finale who has actually won the trip to Jordan and to Brussels. So this was an overview of the next two and a half days going from module five, starting up your own idea into taking many people on board and elaborating that idea further over Thursday morning and afternoon into Thursday evening to pitch it for the first time to a jury. That's the journey we are now going to embark on. And to help you a little bit, we want to look at what three wonderful people did. So what we try to look at is what is what in science and in business is called a unique selling proposition. And this is often abbreviated USP. A unique selling proposition is a unique selling proposition. So there is a few words in it. Unique, it means it is better or different than anything else. Selling means it addresses a market need. So there is somebody who needs it. It's not something you would like to do because you have spare time and you think it's real cool, but it actually will probably sell because it probably addresses a need that somebody had that before, many people have, and not just a few. And proposition is indeed something you offering. It is not about creating a law or anything that will be mandated, but it will be something you offer and others may choose to take it on. So that unique selling proposition, after you have heard the presentations, I'll tell you a little bit more what you should write in that. You will hear for three different businesses. To spell that out a little bit more clear, we will then ask you what's in it for an individual and what's in it for society. We are here consciously not writing what's in it for the customer because in many cases around healthcare, somebody is paying who is not using it, which is one of the key problems. So we are looking at benefits to explain the USP for the individual. So if this is about a particular medication you take and it makes you healthy, this is your individual benefit. The benefit for society may be that you can take care of your family longer, you live longer, and you work longer. But it's two different things. And all of that is quite ethical because not dying and living healthy is something that gives you the choice to be a part of it. So this is the frame we would like you to fill in later. So this is what you please be so kind to listen to when you hear the coming lectures. So in the next 45 minutes, you will meet three exceptional individuals. Rino Rapuli, I think this is fair to say, is a scientist in heart. Rino, yes? Yeah. And we are always waiting that he has, is on the Nobel Prize list or wins something big that may well happen. Reno is the reason why major vaccine companies sit next to his hometown, Siena, because this is uh, where Reno likes to live, and basically with all the companies he started and worked with, he always convinced them to be there where he is. So 
Eno is a science entrepreneur who made a big difference in something that is wildly underestimated currently, which is prevention. And in prevention, something very effective and efficient vaccination. So Reno will later introduce you to the value and to the ideas behind vaccination for adults as part of a demographic solution. So this is a biotech, this is a biotech proposition. There's Falk, who is a consultant, investor, entrepreneur in the healthcare field, and um, as such, looks at many opportunities and will present to you one of the opportunities he has developed into a successful business in the area of care. So this is about human resources, it's about people, and it's about the problem that with this aging society, we need more and more caretaking people in the healthcare industry, and more and more people go to university and else and don't want to do these jobs, but we desperately need it. So Falk has developed, among many other things he did, one business in that area he's going to talk about second. Then there is Rami. Rami is from Jordan. Jordan is a, as you know, it's very small but very beautiful Arab country that is currently geographically in a very disadvantaged position, stuck in between the war in Israel, the war in Syria, Saudi. So it's not a very good geographical situation. It's a country that's landbound, that has no access to sea except for an Akbar a little bit, and a country that is among the poorer directly neighboring countries to the EU. Rami has built a business where he believes it would substantially improve the public health in Jordan by making data about people's health and about the treatment histories available to all doctors in Jordan and to the patient. It is something that we dream about in Germany and we can probably dream for the next 15 years. It will not happen because of too many interests. But here there's a small country who can take a lead, and Rami will then present to you what that means. So, three different industries, three different countries, three wonderful people, all friends of the university. Rino, do you want to start? The stage is yours.